Hi everyone, Dr. Christy here, and today we're breaking down one of the most fascinating and well-studied regenerative peptides in the world, GHK Copper. If you're into skin health, hair growth, microneedling, or you just want to look like you slept eight hours, even if you didn't, then this is worth your attention. I'm also going to share why this peptide is consistently a top favorite among women inside my private peptide and longevity group. So let's get into it. What is GHK Copper? GHK Copper is a naturally occurring peptide that's found in human plasma, saliva, and even urine. And it was discovered way back in the 70s, and since then it's become a major player in regenerative medicine. Here's the part I find most fascinating. GHK copper levels actually drop with age. So young adults have around 200 nanograms per ml, but by age 60, that number falls to 80. And that decline lines up beautifully with what we see on the surface. So slower healing, crepey skin, less elasticity, and slower collagen turnover. GHK copper is essentially a repair signal. It tells the body, rebuild this, and the body listens. GHK binds copper like a magnet and escorts it into cells safely. Copper is required for collagen cross-linking and antioxidant defense, especially superoxide dismutase. This is one of the most important enzymes for protecting tissues from oxidative damage. GHK copper basically is like an Uber driver for copper and it takes it where it's needed. Now we have some really interesting studies to dive into. In a microarray study, GHK shifts thousands of genes, not a handful, thousands, and it's basically about a third of the human genome. It moves towards a more youthful expression pattern, which is pretty cool. And imagine we can do this topically and as an injection and even orally. Some highlights, it upregulated genes for collagen, extracellular matrix repair, and antioxidant defense, and it downregulates genes that are involved in fibrosis, inflammation, and even some associated with cancer progression. That's why people call it a cellular reset peptide. It's not just moisturizing the skin, it's literally reprogramming the repair pathways underneath. GHK activates fibroblasts and keratinocytes, your skin's construction workers. These increase collagen, elastin, glycosaminoglycans, and proteoglycans. Plus, it improves microcirculation by stimulating angiogenesis and bringing oxygen and nutrients back to the skin. GHK copper turns down NF-kappa-B and P38 MAPK. These are pathways that turn on inflammation. It also reduces cytokines like IL-1 beta, IL-6, TNF-alpha, basically helping to restore a healthier redox balance. This is one of the reasons I often pair it with KPV in my own protocols because they tag team inflammation beautifully. We see evidence that GHK copper can support DNA repair, modulates matrix metalloproteinases, which break down collagen, and promotes healthier remodeling of damaged tissue, and could also influence stem cell activity. This is why it has applications not just in cosmetics, but also in models of lung, nerve, and liver repair. Let's talk about skin rejuvenation and anti-aging benefits. This is where GHK copper really shines. So with consistent topical use, we're talking four to 12 weeks, we saw improvements in skin thickness and elasticity, reduced fine lines and wrinkles, smooth texture, brighter complexion, and helps with firmness and hydration. And I can attest to this as well. It's not like a filler, it's actually regenerating your tissue. And in wound healing and tissue repair, it supports faster healing, less scarring, better collagen remodeling, increased blood flow, faster re-epithelialization. I hope I said that right. <laughs> That's why many people reach for it after things like chemical peels, lasers, and microneedling. It also has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant defense properties. It can protect against UV damage, and I've seen that firsthand, pollution, oxidative stress, and inflammatory skin conditions. It's also gentle, which makes it friendly for sensitive or rosacea-prone skin. And in hair growth support, it can actually extend the antigen phase of the hair cycle, which is that's the part where the hair grows out. So people have seen thicker hair strands, better density, less shedding. And when combined with microneedling, chef's kiss, there are also systemic cellular benefits like multiple research models show that it improved lung repair, nerve regeneration, liver health, 
even cognitive markers and neurodegenerative models. So of course, this is all still early research, but super exciting. So let's talk about microneedling because this question comes up all the time. Can you use it after or during microneedling? And I've really dove into this and try to figure out like the best approach. Many dermatologists actually encourage using it because it supports wound healing, wound healing and collagen remodeling. But I say we should wait 72 hours post microneedling. And here's why. So when we microneedle, we're creating tiny micro injuries to the skin. And then that begins an inflammatory cascade, one that we want. This is an inflammatory cascade that we actually want. It's part of the regeneration process. And if we don't have that, we're not going to have the adequate collagen repair. That's the whole reason we're doing the microneedling to begin with. So if you put, um, especially if you're injecting, if you use GHK copper too early, you can interfere slightly with this natural early inflammatory signal. So waiting 72 hours, that's that gets you through that first phase of wound healing that takes place naturally. That's where the body is going to lay down that remodeling phase. And then, then layering in the peptide is going to be really beneficial for reducing inflammation and continuing that healing process. Inside my private women's group, this is hands down one of the most loved peptides for improving skin and hair and overall glow. GHK copper is one of those peptides that constantly surprises me. It's simple, elegant, naturally occurring, and yet the breadth of what it can do is massive. It impacts our skin, our hair, our healing, inflammation, and even alters gene expression. So it's such a multi-tool. I absolutely love it and always have it in my stash. If you found this helpful and want more education like this, or if you want access to protocols, Q&A help, and a community of women that I mentioned earlier, there's a link below that you can join my, my women's peptide group, or you can grab my free peptide guide. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.